Do you sometimes feel as though you're a twig floating down the stream to destinations unknown? Well, I'm going to try to prove to you in this collection of Godwink stories that you have a built-in GPS and you can program it, you know, the way you do your phone, by creating a communication with the navigator. Marjorie and Patrick's love story began in seventh grade. Marjorie was out there on the dance floor twirling around, and she noticed that the new guy in school, Patrick, was looking back at her from the sidelines. Well, from that day forward, Marjorie and Patrick were an item at almost every event at high school. And then Marjorie's family moved away, and they lost touch. Marjorie went on to college, and Patrick joined the band and moved to Hawaii. Now, a decade in Hawaii was a pretty bumpy road for Patrick. He had two failed marriages and alcoholism. He finally pulled himself up in recovery, moved back to California with his mom, took a job an hour away. Life was not bad. One afternoon, he was sitting there with his mom looking through an old photo album. He came across a picture of Marjorie. Uh, he said, why couldn't I have just married Marjorie Southworth in the first place? That gave him an uncontrollable urge to reach out to find her. He called every Southworth in the Los Angeles phone directory. No luck. He thought, well, what could I expect? She's probably married and changed her name. But the next morning, the very morning after he was looking at that photo album, Patrick went to work. And instead of taking his regular route to get to his job, he had a crazy notion. He took the 405 freeway, which was 20 minutes out of the way. He knew it was, but he did it anyway. So there he was pulling onto a, a two-lane ramp to get onto the 405, stuck in traffic, bumper to bumper, and he hears beep beep. He looks to the side, and there is a beautiful woman in a car next to him, and she turns, and she's got sunglasses on, and she lifts them up like an actress in a movie. It was Marjorie! He couldn't believe it! Marjorie! And then he all of a sudden heard beep, 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 beep. All the traffic behind him were making him move, and he didn't know what to do. He had to go into the sea of cars. He felt bad. He tried to keep her in the rearview mirror. He pulled into the traffic, and he waited for the next exit. He pulled off. He looked, and he looked. Oh, boy, she was pulling off after him. They pulled off onto a side street, jumped out of their cars, and hugged. It was like they were back in seventh grade again. A few days later, Marjorie and Patrick had dinner. And not long after that, they became Mr. and Mrs. and had dinner every night since. That's what happens when God winks on love. Hey, are you beginning to understand how your built-in GPS will cause you to be at the right place at the right time to meet the right person that God wants you to meet? Actor Denzel Washington experienced that with Paul Letta. Take a look at this story. At the time, Denzel Washington's career had not yet taken off. In fact, he had just had an unfulfilling film experience in Hollywood He'd moved back to New York and he was living with his mom. He did get a small part in a film in New York and there he spotted this gorgeous New York actress, but he didn't have the courage to talk to her. Later at a party, there she was, and her name was Pauletta. He did start a conversation and it was great, but by the end of the conversation, he still didn't have the gumption to ask her for a phone number or to tell her that he was living with his mom. <laughs> You know, the next day, he got up and he was kicking himself that he didn't have her phone number. 
But somebody called and told him that there was a little obscure off-Broadway show. Would he like to go? He did. He got there late. The curtain had already gone up. He took his seat. And when the lights came up at intermission, he turned to his right, and there she was! Pauletta had been sitting right next to him all during the first act. How's that for a god wink? Well, I'll tell you what. Pauletta said our whole introduction to each other felt like it was set up in the heavens. Well, we found out that Denzel and Pauletta's built-in GPS works in a darkened movie theater. But what would happen if you were miles away, maybe off in the Middle East somewhere? Would your built-in GPS work there? Well, let's look at Lisa's story. With so much uncertainty facing Lisa, she leapt at the opportunity to take a trip to the Holy Land when it was offered at her church. It would be good to get 6,000 miles away from home and the uncertainty about having a baby. And it was going great until the second day they were supposed to take a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho and then the bus broke down and they had to wait a long time for a replacement bus. And then the driver said he was going to take a back road all the way along that route. Lisa looked out the window and she kept seeing mothers and babies and children playing on playgrounds. And it just exacerbated the concerns that she had about having a baby of her own. Finally, the bus rolled to a stop at a rest stop. She was glad. She rushed off the bus. Now the ladies' room at this particular place was marked with a picture of a lady and the men's room with a picture of a man. So she went running into the ladies' room. When she came out, she noticed that there were other ladies on the bus standing around the door, looking at the picture and then giggling at her. She looked at the picture. It was of her. What? Was this some kind of joke? No, then she remembered 20 years before she had given permission to use that picture on a Red Cross poster. Wow, what are the odds that that would happen? That God delivered her a God wink. Oh yes, two weeks after Lisa got home, the doctor called. Guess what? You're gonna have a baby. Wow. Pass out the cigars. Now, earlier, I said that you can program your built-in GPS, God's positioning system. You do that by talking to the navigator, the way Alice did in this Godwink story. Alice had given up on men. These were the exact words she used. Lord, if you want me to be married, you pick him out because so far my choices stink. Well, those were the exact words she used. And with that, she surrendered. But it was about a month later that she was at an event. She stepped in front of a gentleman with beautiful golden brown eyes. They started a conversation and they talked and they talked. And after about an hour or two, Alice looked at her watch like Cinderella. She said, Oh my gosh, I have to go. I've got to drive eight hours to Victoria to a wedding. My cousin's getting married. The man said, wow, what a coincidence. I'm going to a wedding in Victoria and my cousin's marrying a doctor. She said, my cousin is a doctor. Well, that was an incredible God wink. So what do you do in a case like that? You drive down together, you save on gas. Well, they drove down together and they jibber jabbered all the way. They didn't have a moment of dead air. And when they got to the wedding, they danced and Alice said, my toes hardly touched the floor. And when Jack walked her to her room at night and kissed her goodnight, she said, my toes curled. I don't know what it is with these toes, but the next day she got up and she went down to breakfast with Uncle Charlie, her favorite Uncle Charlie. And she told him that she had met the man she's going to marry. What's his name? He said, Jack, Jack Tota. Uncle Charlie said, Tota, I wonder if he's related to Nabib Tota. At that moment, Jack walked into the kitchen and he said, Nabib is my uncle. Uncle Charlie said, you better sit down, kids. I got to tell you something. He said, 50 years ago, when I came to America on a ship, I was 
filled with uncertainty about what was going to happen, I met another young man who was my age, who had the same feelings. His name was Nabib. We were best pals all the way across the ocean. But when we got to customs, we got separated, and I never found out whatever happened to my friend, Nabib. Well, a year later, there was another great wedding. Alice and Jack were married, and they're sitting in the front row to celebrate it. We're two old friends, Uncle Charlie and Uncle Nabib. That's what happens when God winks at you. Remember at the beginning of Alice's story, she looked up and she said, God, if you want me to be married, you're going to have to pick him out. Well, whether she knew it or not, she was saying a prayer. And that is the secret to programming your internal GPS, your God's positioning system. You say a prayer, you talk to the navigator. Go ahead, try it. I dare you. I'm Squire Rushnell. Good wishes and God winks.